Here we have a pre-owned 2009 GMC Yukon. This one comes in the Denali trim level in gold mist metallic. And then we have jet black perforated leather interior. Now the powertrain of this one consists of a 6.2 liter naturally aspirated V8, made it to a six speed automatic transmission. And then this one also is flex fuel capable so we can put E85 or gasoline in it. Has a little bit over 90,000 miles, I believe. Coming around to the front end here, halogen headlamps as well as fog lights. The signature Denali grill still looks fantastic, even after all these years. A little bit of peel in here, a few rock chips. But for as old as it is, not bad shape. Come around here, these 20s still look good. Has that chrome clad finish. We have the molded running boards down below. And then over here, three stage heated cooled seats and then memory seat functions there. And then door handle. We have one touch express down on the front windows and then just regular power windows in the back. Power door lock controls, rear window lock. And then we can power fold our mirrors when they're working. And then power mirror controls are here. We can turn those on and off and adjust. And then we do have the integrated turn signal indicators there as well. Bottle holder here, a little storage there. Headlamp controls, fog light controls. We're gonna pop the hood for later. And then we have a foot brake and then a release that you just pull up here. But here's our power driver seat and we also have power lumbar support as well. And then just a little bit of cracking on this driver seat. This one seems to be in more rough shape than I'm used to on these. But let's go ahead and hop in this back seat. Check out the leg room. So great space here, even though I have the seat lean back. Being 6'3", knees are just barely touching the back of the seat, and then I have about an inch or two of headroom. And we do have seat back pockets on both sides. And then we have our rear AC controls. We also have rear audio controls as well. We can use the aux inputs there, and then fan speed can be controlled for the AC. And then we also have three stage heated seats for the outboard seats here. And then we can control what direction the air is blowing by hitting that and adjust temperature, so on and so forth. Then we have a 12 volt here, audio video cables, cup holders there. And there's a view of the back seat to fold it down. And then up here we have the rear entertainment system. So theoretically you can run an Xbox or something through here and then play it on the screen and you turn all that on and off from the front. A grab handle here. We could probably hang two of the skinny metal hooks on this hanger hook here. Let's make our way towards the back. So fuel filler here, open that up. And it's crazy that this is actually a lockable gas cap. So if you're worried about people stealing your gas, it's nice to have that there. But to the back end, nice look. And I love the rumble you get out of this exhaust on these older Yukons with a 6.2. Just sounds super beefy. So the power lift gate seems to be working. And then we can just fold these up. And these seats are also removable if you want to take them out for more space. So it's good to see that the power lift gate still seems to be in good shape. And then just a quick look, that's with the seats up. So I mean, pretty good leg room. You saw that I sat there, no problem. And then I could probably fit back there if I wanted to, just that seat back would be an issue, but cup holders and storage there. And then a little side pocket here. And if you want to fold the seats flat, you can just pull that there. Pretty easy to do. And then you can just fold it back up. And it doesn't require, it does not require a lot of effort, 
which is good. And then our front passenger seat, same adjustability as the driver's side. Power, power lumbar support. This one obviously hasn't been used as much. A little less cracking and fading is noticeable here. Then glove compartment there, which is actually a decent size. I love the wood grain finish that goes across there. Just starting to see a little bit of fading on the top. But coming back around to the front end, we're gonna pop the hood. And it was that 6.2 liter naturally aspirated V8. That shock is, or that strut's tough to pull down on holding up the hood. Well, let's hop in the driver's seat. Quick run through for all those features. So we do have the leather wrapped steering wheel here. It actually has like a a faux wood grain kind of cover here and the leather's on the inside which looks nice it's just started to fade over time which this is known to do that as well as a few other controls but we'll go back to the steering wheel in a minute over here navigation system that's the full screen if you want to type in a destination just hit that button and then you can use a point of interest previous destination or type in an address and it's pretty cumbersome as these older navigation systems were but it still gets the job done You can go back here. And then for the audio, we do have AM, FM, XM, and an aux input. And then we also have a DVD drive here. And then all of your settings are here for sound, radio, nav, the display, all of that. And then we can seek here, go through our track list, or our state radio stations here. That's a tune knob and a volume knob here and we can click that to turn the audio off but that seems to be working the cd drive and the aux input is actually here now down below here we have dual zone automatic climate control so here we can adjust where the fan is blowing and then here we can adjust the fan speed and then temperature for either side can be adjusted there and then we can turn on the rear ac and then we can turn off the dual zone if we want to an AC toggles here, power for the whole system here, and the auto mode there. And then to turn that off, you just turn down the fan speed. But two 12 volts here, traction control toggle, parking sensors, we can turn those off. And then we do have power adjustable pedals. Seem to still be working somewhat. Here are the controls for the gauge cluster here, so we can go between, I don't know why this is at 90,000. This has 191,862 miles, so. I apologize for that mix up. That makes a lot more sense now. Why this one is as worn down as it is. I don't know why I thought that, but anyways. So this is off a little bit, storage there. Cup holders are here. And then center console space. This one still has the wireless headphones and remotes. Good storage size though. And then another 12 volt. And then the power sunroof, sunroof is still working. So we can one touch slide that and then hit it one more time to slide all the way back. And then we can one touch close it. Same thing with the tilt. Then we have a universal home remote, OnStar. There's a view of the back seat from up here. Then we do get that Bose sound system. But back to the steering wheel, windshield wiper controls are here, intermittents in the middle here, and then you have low and high, and then rear wiper fluid. Just pull that and then front wiper fluid, hit this button right here. And then we can adjust the rear wiper on and off. High beams are there and we can flash the high beams there. And for the shifter, just hit the brake, pull down, reverse, neutral, drive, and the manual mode, you can manually shift there. And then we have our cruise control. You can turn that on, heat a steering wheel, cancel the cruise, set, resume. And we have a voice recognition Bluetooth, or not Bluetooth, but mute button down here. And then we can go through our sources. And then this can go through the track list if we want to do that. And then volume controls are here. Hazards are up here. And there is the key. And here's the fob here. And that does have remote start. And one other thing, tow haul mode is right here. 
But now for the fun part, let's go ahead and take this 191,000 mile GMC Yukon Denali out on the road for a test drive. So starting the test drive in this Yukon, just getting a little bit of play here from the transmission. So I don't know if it's about to go out or what, but again, this has 100 and almost 192,000 miles on it. It's almost like it doesn't want to shift. But this one hasn't been through service. So I don't know what it could be. But the V8 seems to still be strong. But we do have the check engine light on. We have the tire pressure sensors on. The tire pressure sensor is probably broken. And the check engine light is probably a multitude of factors. As these get up there, especially these older ones, certain codes start to get thrown. While they can still be driven, they just are not necessarily perfect. But still gets up rather quickly. But now the service brakes soon. Indicator on there. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but the cruise control doesn't want to work. But again, this was a fresh trade. So this one is probably going to go to auction, but if it doesn't, all this stuff will be repaired as it's supposed to. But honestly, the ride is great. It's a good riding SUV. But I love that this still rumbles sounds good again the engine still seems strong it's just a transmission again around the first second third gear hesitant to shift but one thing i've always loved about these is these were loud vehicles the ride was always plush but you had that aggressive sound in these denali's particularly And again, still pulling good. Now with this one having the miles that it does, right under 192, if you're looking for something cheap, if you wanna get something, you could probably find some under 10 grand with that kind of mileage. Might need a few things fi fixed up, especially if you're a mechanic or something, you might have yourself a, a bargain there if you can fix your transmission, redo your engine, things of that nature if it needs it. And then you probably drive this another 150, 200,000 miles. I'm sure the radio doesn't have too much life left, but you can do aftermarket with that. The AC is still blowing cold, so you should be good there. But these just, there's nostalgia attached to these older Yukons, Escalades. They were really the cream of the crop before everybody else got on board, in my opinion. In terms of, I mean, Lexus had their vehicles. Of course, you could get a Range Rover or something like that. But in terms of just American-made SUVs, I feel like Ford wasn't really touching it like they are now. You could get a Lincoln, but again, around this time, I feel like the Navigator might have been a bit dated. But you just have a nostalgic feel of having that 6.2 liter V8 heated and cooled seats and you just felt like king of the road in one of these but this will bring me to the end of my review of this 2009 gmc yukon denali